You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you. Now, some of you guys may be familiar with that phrase from watching cop shows or movies. Um, that is something that police officers say to anybody whenever they're arrested, or they're supposed to say it, whenever they arrest a suspect. And they are called Miranda rights, okay? And I wanna talk about them and use them as an example um, to show you basically an example of some constitutional amendments and how they impact people's everyday lives. So let me go ahead and share with you where that comes from and why it's called the Miranda rights, okay? So it started because of, or started surrounding a case called Miranda versus Arizona. And this was a case that went to the Supreme Court. But the backstory of, of what you need to know about this, and this is um, Ernesto Miranda here, so it's based on his name. Ernesto Miranda was arrested on a few different charges, but the police officer who arrested him never informed him of the fact that um, he had these rights, that he could remain silent, um, and that he could choose not to speak until he had an attorney, that means a lawyer, who was present there with him. And so they just brought him in and they just started questioning him, and he eventually gave a confession. And then through that confession, he was found guilty. Well, his lawyer later decided to appeal that, right? We learned that term, which basically means challenge that ruling. And it went all the way up to the Supreme Court. And the main argument was that by the Fifth Amendment, that everybody has the right to remain silent. Basically, they don't have to confess. They don't have to admit anything about what they did. They're not legally required. And they also have the right to always have a lawyer before being questioned by the police. And basically the argument was, since he wasn't informed of those rights, it wasn't a fair way for them to question him. And the Supreme Court found in Ernesto's favor and said, you're right, that evidence must be, uh, the confession must be taken off the record and his case was reversed, okay? Now, I do believe later on, they tried him again in a new case and they did find him guilty even without the confession. But for a time, at least, it showed that a case can be reversed if the police officers don't take the time to inform the people of their rights. So it's actually, it's really important. And that's why you see police officers will always say that now because they don't want to end up having some important information come out during questioning and then having that thrown out because somebody proved that they never read the Miranda rights to the, to the suspect that they arrested. Okay, so again, that's in, so that's example of the Fifth and the Sixth Amendment, because again, the Fifth Amendment says that you don't have to confess anything yourself. It's called the right um, against self-incrimination, I believe is the fancy terminology, but the idea is basically you don't have to um, confess on yourself, and you can be silent. And then the sixth one is you have the right to remain silent until you have an attorney, and just in general that you have the right to an attorney and a lawyer and that you will have the right to have a trial with that lawyer present. That's the Sixth Amendment. And for people who can't afford to hire a lawyer, the state will provide a lawyer for them. That's, that's again, that's the Sixth Amendment. So we're seeing the Fifth and the Sixth Amendment in action in that case. And so um, that actually brings us to our focus for today, which is on constitutional amendments and the Bill of Rights. And so before I touch on the vocab, I guess we, we should remember that, that background, that initially there wasn't gonna be a Bill of Rights in the Constitution, right? The Federalists thought that the Constitution was good as it was, they wanted to pass it. The Anti-Federalists were like, uh-uh, no way, we're not gonna pass this unless you have a list of rights that every individual um, deserves in this country because they were really worried that the government would try to take too much power. And so they chose not to pass the Constitution in Massachusetts and forced a compromise, which we learned about, right? Which was when the Federalists said, okay, if you guys agree to pass this Constitution, we promise we will add 10 amendments um, on that list these really important rights. And so the Anti-Federalists agreed, they passed the Constitution, and the Federalists were true to their word, and they added the first 10 amendments to the Constitution, which we call the Bill of Rights. So with all that being uh, said there, uh, the word amendment itself, the word, or especially specifically a constitutional amendment is a change made to the constitution, right? So we wrote 
or our country wrote this document way a long time ago, but they made a process so that it could be changed because presumably we were going to change and have new ideas as we came along. So it is possible to change our constitution. It just requires a lot of votes to do it. Um, but if you want to change it, that is what a constitutional amendment is. And so you can add sort of a new law. They technically wouldn't call it a law, but I'm going to try to keep it simple. You could add new laws um, that protect certain rights or make certain things legal or illegal um, in the constitution by, by making an amendment, making a change. And again, those first 10 amendments are called the Bill of Rights. That's our second term here. And those all pretty much focus around protecting individual freedoms and individual rights as a way to keep the government from being able to take too much control um, over individuals' lives. So that's what your assignment's gonna be about today. Let me pull it up so we can take a look. It's called the, why can't they do that assignment, okay? And so the idea is that I'm, go I'm creating hypothetical examples in which maybe a police officer or um, a politician or somebody's doing something that really goes against one of our 10, the first 10 constitutional amendments. So it goes against something in the Bill of Rights. You have to decide which amendment make that event, um, that action unconstitutional. So basically which constitutional amendment did they break and then explain how they broke it, okay? Now I'm gonna do an example as usual because I think that will help this make more sense. But let me show you the reading, okay? Because this is in uh, Discovery Education. Right, it's gonna be 4.3 tabs 10 through 12. Make sure you always read the directions because that's where I tell you where the reading is. I've had some students who I think haven't found the reading because I don't think they've looked at the directions and then they tried to do the worksheet without the reading. It didn't work out very well, okay? So we're gonna to go to Discovery Education. We're, we're done with 4.2, so we're gonna to go to 4.3. And we are gonna to go to tab 10. Tab 10 covers, as you can see, the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, they're always putting them in blue, and the Third Amendment. And you'll see that tab 11 covers the Fourth through the Eighth, and then the Twelfth tab covers the Ninth and the Tenth Amendment, okay? Now in this worksheet, I have six scenarios. So that means we're only gonna cover six of the amendments. So some of them I'm not gonna Include, include examples because I don't want to overload you with too much. And I just wanted to focus on some of the most common amendments that seem to come up in situations. I think the best way to do the assignment is not to read the example and then just go searching the document to find the right amendment. Um, you could try that, that's up to you. I think it's just easier to just start doing the reading and then every time you read about an amendment, think about what that's about and then go to this document the assignment and try to find if one of those scenarios fits with it okay that's just my uh, my best suggestion and that's how i'm going to do it when i model it so i'm going to go in first and read and i'm going to find out what the first amendment is about and then i'm going to go to the document and see if i can find an example that shows uh basically somebody breaking the first amendment okay so the first paragraph says, Americans such as Patrick Henry were prepared to die to keep their freedom. Personal freedom permits us to live our lives the way we want. Our personal liberty is protected by the first three amendments. The first amendment. The first amendment secures the rights of the people to meet together, to engage in political activity, and to share ideas. It protects citizens' rights to free speech and a free press. Free press means you can print anything in a newspaper, online blog, um, without getting arrested for it. Um, this means that the government may not prevent individuals from speaking, well, they pretty much said what I just said, from speaking or publishing their opinions, and it may not punish them for what they say or what they write, okay? So freedom of speech, right? We talk about that. We get to say our opinions, and uh, the government can't arrest us for that, and we can type out and print it in a newspaper, on our own blog, on a social media site, um, and we cannot be, be taken into custody for doing something like that because we believe that in our country to be truly free, we have to be able to express what we think. So I'm gonna go back to this document and I'm just gonna start reading through the, exa the examples and see if any of those look like somebody's freedom of speech is being prevented, okay? So number one, a local police department in a town believes that a man named Smith is a high level drug dealer. 
They want to try to catch him with the stash so that they have evidence against him. They don't want to wait for the judge to grant them a warrant, so they knock his door down and search for drugs. So that doesn't seem to have anything to do with speech. You know, this is about the cops not getting a warrant and breaking into somebody's home to find evidence. So that is one of the other amendments that you'll want to find, but you can you know, sort of cross that off for this one and say, ah, I'm going to keep looking for something that relates to like freedom of speech or freedom of the press, right? Freedom to pu publish things. All right, number two, a celebrity named Jones often speaks out about social and political issues. She has a big Twitter following. Recently, she began tweeting numerous criticisms of the president each day. This began to hurt the president's reputation, so he ordered the FBI to arrest her. Ha, huh. that to me sounds like it is going against the First Amendment, right? She is trying to exercise her right to, to say and to publish her opinions. And somebody, in this case, the president, is actually trying to prevent her from doing this, trying to take her in and arrest her for doing something that she has a cons constitutional right to do. So right off the bat, I don't even have to look at the text yet for this part, because I know I was looking for which amendment um, that person broke and that person, the president broke the first amendment there. Okay. Now the why just means what did he do in this case that was wrong? What did he do that he shouldn't uh, have done? Now, if you need to refresh yourself, you can go back again and remind yourself, okay, yeah, the first amendment means that the government can't prevent individuals from speaking or publishing their opinions. So then you think about this situation. You're like, well, that's exactly what the president did right? He punished this woman for publishing her own opinions. So that's all you have to put is explain what they did wrong. So I'm going to put the president punished. And I'm going to put tried to because if our government is working properly, it wouldn't end up working, um, but he would try to. So the president tried to punish Jones for publishing her opinion which is her constitutional right to do. Something like that. And there you go. So that would be number two down, okay? I found out that that example, the president broke the first amendment and how did he break it? Because he tried to punish her for doing something that was her constitutional right to do. Okay, so there are six total. That means I'm going to leave that on there for you so you can see a good example. Um, that means you have five more that you have to do on your own. I would encourage you just to go back to the reading, read through, read what the Second Amendment is, and then just go through the scenarios and try to find uh, if any of those break the Second Amendment and just follow the steps that I showed you there. Also, remember that on Discovery Education, you can highlight the text and click the speak uh, button and you can have it read aloud to you. So I'm not going to record one of me reading it because the discovery ed already has that function for you. So if that's something that's helpful to you, um, be sure to use that. All right. That's all I've got. Good luck on that. Let me know if you have questions. See you guys.